Okay, once I've completed my anterior 1x6 here, this is once again project number 5. I'm going to move forward and set up the lower anterior teeth, which will establish my uh, overjet overbite. I'm just taking a little bit of wax off here. Now, you should have the pin in place for this, but I've taken it out so you can visually see what I'm trying to achieve. I have a pretty good posterior stop for vertical dimension on my occlusion rim, so I will not lose my vertical dimension. So please, when you're doing so, either make sure you have a very strong positive stop in the posterior or leave this incisal pin in the anterior section. So once again, I will start to heat up and I'll do half of the anterior uh, at a time, uh, maintaining the labial support of the lower rim, at the same time maybe adhering the rim with wax. Again, my model has been soaked in water prior to doing the setup. When I'm going to start the setup, then I have full anticipation that I'm going to finish in that instance, so I'm not like going back three days later. But in the event that something comes up and you need to go back, uh, re-soak the model, uh, reseal the base down, and start as if you were starting from the beginning with the uh, adhering of the wax to the model. I don't want the lower base or the lower occlusion room to be moving around when I'm setting up the teeth. I need it to be uh, in position. As you can see, I just moved it here with some my spatula. I can take the excess wax off. And this is going to be a class one occlusion and utilizing lingualized occlusion. Um, we've taken some philosophies for many denture uh, occlusal philosophy technicians, so to speak. And many times, uh, as Dr. Easy uh, True Bite teeth would reduce the occlusal table to 60%, and we have other uh, dental companies increasing the occlusal table to that much of a natural size, which these uh, Vita MFT teeth that we're going to utilize in this case uh, will probably be dropping a uh, bicuspid uh, in the posterior section as I'm looking at the length of the posterior occlusal table. Um, in most fixed or removal prosthodontics, if we can restore the client to the first molar in function, then I think this would be uh, our goal. It's not necessary to have a full complement of four, five, six, and seven. Uh, as long as we're getting to that first molar. And in denture setup, if we go to Dr. Gerber, usually around the deepest part of the posterior ridge before we increase to 22 degrees would be the stop point for prosthetic denture tooth setup as to not have anything occluding on an inclined plane in the posterior segment. So here I'm kind of uh, checking out the overjet of the central and the overbite, uh, maintaining obviously the vertical dimension from the occlusion rims. I've got my pin out. It's kind of dangerous, but I think we'll be okay. And I just keep checking here. I think I'm satisfied with this as a starting point. Maybe slightly too much overbite. I'm just going to intrude my lower central here a little bit into the wax. And I can show you from this instance here, uh, around uh, two to two and a half, three millimeters over jet, two millimeters over bite. If I can hold my spatula there and open it up, uh, you can see that that's around a millimeter and a half of over bite. Uh, somewhat a bit of semantics when we start talking about millimeters of over bite over jet. I mean, there is an incisal thickness to the tooth. That, are we measuring just the space, or are we including some of this incisal edge of the tooth? So I'm going to proceed and try to finish all anterior six teeth here. After putting the first one in, it does make it a little bit easier moving forward for the, uh, the next one. Lateral. Now I know I have no base plate down there, which is really helping me out. I don't have to reduce any... A prosthetic teeth, keeping its full length, keeping my overjet symmetrical. I can rotate this lateral just slightly. Now I can go back and do the central to maintain my midline, but I can see that it's pretty much spot on. I'm just going to carry on and do the canine. You could go back and do the central if you wish.
Oops. A little aggressive taking that base plate off with the, by accident. Be careful. So we chose the corresponding mold L37 for R47 for the maxillary as these two match in a class one situation. And this is for the manufacturer specification. You can see the canine just laid off behind the canine here on the lower. Uh, many times we don't know about our situation until we start setting it up. And then, but we have the uh, luxury of having tooth supplies at our laboratories if we need to increase or decrease the width of the denture teeth. Both manufacturers have probably double or triple the amount of anterior upper molds versus the amount of lower molds. So sometimes we need to have some slight manipulation of the lower molds to, uh, to fit into the uh, occlusal scheme that we're trying to achieve. But so far, so good here, I think, with this. Pretty straightforward. Amen. I'm thinking about the setup. So I'm going to take off this excess wax on the lingual, hopefully without moving any of the teeth. Be very careful. Keeping my posterior point stops here and my rims because I've taken out that, uh, that uh, incisal pin. I can see here that my anterior is just at the extent of the outside the labial, just the centrals, out, just a hair outside the labial, um, labial to the mandibular ridge. Move and we'll try to the corresponding central. Check occlusally. Now you can see occlusally I have some lingual version on the central, so I'm going to touch the neck in. Again, from the labial aspect, from the side, cross section, angle. Once I'm satisfied, the wax into the base, I'll move on to the lateral. I think it's important, you know, we spend a lot of time setting up denture teeth one at a time, but if we can do them in sections, like segments, these three, the other three, or two centrals and a lateral, if you want to do three, and then it's still somewhat molten, then I can go back and change it, because it's hard to know where one tooth goes without reference of the one beside it, either to the left or to the right. You know, we're just putting it in a free space. And that's when we gravitate towards the fixed prosthodontics, is a little simpler because we have teeth adjacent to the, let's say, single crown, whether it's a PFM, PPM, gold crown, or mild zirconia, what have we. We have teeth adjacent to it. We have a chase teeth occluding to it. We have the defined space of where we make our prosthetic, and therefore it's more of a, mm, let's say, contrived game. It's kind of set up for us. I'm looking at the freeway space when I open this. I got the same amount of daylight and freeway space. I don't have one sticking up above the plane of occlusion. Now, I, yes, I'm a little cavalier doing it by eye. I'm not using a setup plate yet, but I will introduce one shortly. Uh, but these are just anterior teeth. I'll probably reserve that more when I get to the posterior section. And I've got one more tooth here to set up for the... Canine. So I think if you could do the setup or think of it as in, you know, three or four uh, setup positions, like the anterior six, the lower six, the lower eight, and the upper eight. Now, again, if we go to Dr. Giese's 20 degree denture setup philosophy from True Bite, they would set up the lower anteriors last. They would go to the upper six and then set up a first, uh, the upper eight. With the setup plane transposing the the uh, transposing the lower ridge onto that setup plate, setting up our upper teeth on the plane perpendicular to the plane, except till we get to the mesial lingual cusp of the first molar, half a millimeter off that plane, and then conversely or subsequently after the mesial lingual cusp of the second molar, a millimeter, then finally a millimeter and a half off the plane for the distal lingual cusp of the second molar. And this is creating a compensating curve of the maxillary first. Where, and then they would start with the first molar of the lower, 
and then the lower anteriors would be last. I think for education purposes, I think it's a lot easier if you do the upper six and the lower six. You can control your positioning of the anterior teeth a little bit better. Um, a lot of people are frustrated if they've done it the other way, and then this is completely against any belief system that they have. But rest assured, the same result will occur. I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, put a compensating curve of my lower posterior setup, and I will still have those balancing contacts on one side as I have working on the other. Uh, and I guess really the lower six teeth are the only ones that, because of the overjet, are not in contact in centric occlusion. So these teeth are not in contact in centric occlusion or in centric relation is the bite record. And we could have some freedom to overlap um, off the plane. We can really, uh, you know, do some aesthetic things with the anterior six, crowding, let's say. And... If we follow True Bites, Dr. Giese's 20 degree setup, we would put these six teeth last. So uh, I apologize to those that are looking at this saying, my goodness, why is he putting those teeth on so soon? But uh, I'm going to just go about this way. I think is easier for education purposes. And I think the results are predictable or just as predictable, if not more predictable. But you know what? We'll find out uh, when we're done here. So I will be back with the lower posteriors.